The RS6 made it to SEMA, but not without a seized engine. Oh no. So now we're pushing it out of SEMA, and we've got to figure out how we're going to fix this thing. I have no idea. Imagine rebuilding an RS6 and then flying it over 5,000 miles across the world for a car show. SEMA. 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 Welcome to the SEMA show. But then the engine seizes moments into the journey. No. This is not good at all. Well, that's what happened to us. We managed to get the car to DDE's workshop to inspect it, but still couldn't find the true cause of the failure. Oh no. Oh. And with time ticking, we were left with no choice but to trailer the car the rest of the way to the show, where it sat and people admired, but they didn't know the engine was seized. So uh, this, this looks uh. This looks like really sketchy, doesn't it? It's very tight. Yeah. Straight, Look at straight, that. Straight, straight. Right there. Oh yeah. my. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna go ahead and say this was a mistake building this car. <laughs> <laughs> just, gonna, just gonna put that out there. Well, Freddie's car had to be taken back to his workshop, so we might as well join him. Yay! So it looks like we're heading to Florida. And my car's arrived at Freddie's unit. Let's get fixing it. Now it may seem strange that we've took the car to Florida instead of taking it back home to fix it, but it will all make sense. For now, I'm dying to find out what is wrong with the engine and whether we can fix it. So far, we know that we took the spark plugs out of that side and one of them, well, it should look kind of like that. So it should have a tip on and that one has completely perished. One is missing, so it looks like it's either broken off for some reason or potentially that cylinder on that side or one of them has got extremely hot and burnt it off, which will explain probably why it happens later. But one thing that's kind of unexplainable is, check this out, no coolant inside the coolant reservoir at all. So we're gonna find out exactly where that coolant's gone and how the hell it's got there. My first step is gonna be removing all the spark plugs on the other side of the engine. And after we've got those spark plugs out, we're gonna see if the engine will turn over. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's not good. That's soaked. The reason why it's wet, we don't know. But it could have something to do with the charge cooler. If the charge cooler's leaked or perished, then it could leak water into the engine. But we're just working through the problems one by one, and we'll get onto that later. Not oh, well. that one looks all right. Yeah, that's all right. That one just looks fuely. Not that wet. Looks good. Yeah. Wet. Uh, yeah, it's, it's even blowing bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> now, if there was coolant in the cylinders, that could potentially stop the engine from turning over because the piston's trying to compress liquid. Hydro lock. But now that we've taken all the spark plugs out, the piston should be able to push all the fluid out of the cylinder when we turn over the car. That's if it turns over. Okay, go on. Two options now. It turns over and it sprays loads of water out of the cylinders and it looks good and we figure out how the water got in the cylinders and why that spark plug burnt. Or it doesn't turn over at all and something's bent and broken. Let's hope it's option one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> We're gonna be here a while. <laughs> that noise is the starter motor trying to turn the engine over. And the fact it's not turning over with no spark plugs in is not good. That means something has seized, broke, bent, broken. You said that. Or seized. <laughs> I have an idea. Out comes the camera. We're going to put this camera down the spark plug hole into the cylinder. Engine very bad. That's not good. Oh my god, what is all that? But all that it showed us was that it was just wet. It's not too bad. Hey, look, yeah, the piston looks all right. The pistons looked okay, but there was huge pools of water on them. It's strange that there's coolant on every cylinder, which makes me think more and more that it is the charge cooler. Oh, oh. oh my. 
Now you can see here, the air comes in these two pipes, goes through the turbo where it creates boost, the air comes out of each turbo and then into this charge cooler here. Now inside the charge cooler, it will look almost like a radiator where coolant is circulating. And with the air blowing through it, it should keep the air cool before it goes into the engine on each side. But if the charge cool is leaking, then it could be sucking water into the intake manifold on both sides of the engine, which explains all the coolant in there. So I was going to take the charge cooler out and test it to see if it was leaking. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> the water stayed in it though. So, okay, if we pressurize this with water, it should not leak any water out of this because the... So the water's traveling through this and going through the veins like that. And then the air is going through this to keep the air cool. If we pressurize some water through there somehow, we put a hose pipe on, it should only come back out of that hole. And if it doesn't, that's where the waters came from. No. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I think we're no, I think it's good. Oh. It's not that, is it? No, that's fine. <laughs> the hunt continues. And the only way we're going to find out what happened is just to start stripping the engine apart. So I think we've got to start stripping the engine apart. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I'm going to start by trying to gain access to the front of the engine, which means I've got to take the front bumper off, which is a little harder now it's got this ridiculous GT3 kit on. Once I got the front bumper off, we can work away at taking apart the crash bar. And once we got the crash bar off, we can then work away onto the radiators. First off, we're going to draw all of the AC gas out of the system. That way, when we take the aircon condenser off, it's not going to pour all the AC gas out. And now with all the pipes disconnected and the bolts undone, we can remove the whole front end away from the car. Front end's off. Still, no clues. We can't see any holes in the engine. We can't see anything just yet. I think we're going to drain the oil. That should give us some clues of what's going on. I just think it's going to be full of water. But if it's full of metal and water, that would be quite funny. For you, not for me. <laughs> oh my. This, this, where's the oil? There, there's the oil. I can't believe that. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Engine very bad. To be honest, it seems like this engine is toast. But we still can't be sure on why it happened. So we're left with no other choice now but to try and get the engine out of the car so we can figure this mystery out. Off comes the exhaust and the prop shaft and then we're going to remove the bonnet. The plan is to get the heads off. So we're just gonna drop the engine out on the subframe to do that and well, there's wires and stuff everywhere. It's actually pretty hard to work on the Audi, like, and everything's all plastic, look. Inlet manifold's plastic, everything's all plastic. So that's great. The work continues on the Audi and the more we work on this car, the more we realize it wasn't supposed to be worked on. Everything is so tight and compact it makes it impossible for mechanics. Right, fuel line is disconnected and fuel could be a massive part in this. Although a lot of people jump to straight for the remap that we've done on the car, it's unlikely that it would be the remap, but it's more likely it would be the fuel. The car is remapped to only use 99 ROM fuel, which we can get in the UK, good fuel. In California, we can't get that fuel. And if you remember in the last video, the car was running just fine until stupid me decided to put 91 octane fuel in it, which is the equivalent to the UK's 95 Ron fuel. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that because in California, you can only get 91. It's something to do with their emissions over there. And, and let me explain what that would do. The higher the fuel octane rating, the greater the pressure it can withstand before it self ignites in the cylinder. The air fuel mixture in the cylinder is only supposed to ignite when the spark plug sparks, which is when the piston is right at the top of the stroke. That way you could get maximum power. Now, because I've remapped the car, 
we're effectively adding more air into the cylinder to get a bigger explosion, which is more power. But more compressed air also causes more heat. So after the remap, the piston is coming up on its compression stroke and is compressing more air. And if we had low octane fuel here, it could cause self-ignition. This is where some of the air fuel mixture already ignites before the piston even gets to the top of the cylinder. And if this keeps happening, it's gonna cause a lot of heat in that cylinder which could explain why the tip of my spark plug has just burnt off. This is the exact reason why cars aren't remapped from factory, to deal with all different types of fuel and altitude around the world. There's another nut up there somewhere. This is a great angle of view. Why have you got me in there? You can see right up, you can see my brain from that angle. <laughs> <laughs> Now let's start disconnecting anything which connects the engine to the chassis of the car. Now we're undoing these two bolts instead of this long bolt here, which would actually be easier to undo than we could lower it down. But this bolt, if you know anything about Audis, is the devil. It has a steel bolt going for an aluminium housing, which causes it to just corrode together. And more than likely, that bolt will be seized in and we don't want to be dealing with seized bolts. So that's why we're doing these bolts at the back and that should lower it down. My dad's loosening off the top mount bolts, so that should lower the strut a little bit further down just so I can pull out these top suspension arms. And once the suspension arms are out of the way, I'm going to remove the brake caliper and tie it to the chassis of the car. Then I don't have to drain any brake fluid. Right, everything's disconnected. It is time to undo the bolts which hold the gearbox and hold the subframe to the chassis of the car and then we're going to lower it all down in one piece and we can finally figure out what the hell has gone wrong with this engine. Let's do it. Last thing connected, apart from the subframe, is the steering rack to the steering column. Just here. Steering column, connected, disconnected from the steering rack. Time for the engine to come out. We are going to disconnect the last few subframe bolts and we're going to use this to lever out the engine and the gearbox as one. Hopefully this works, but that engine is a monstrosity. Here we go. I'm going to slide this pallet truck under and then remove the last few bolts out of the subframe so then the engine rests onto the pallet truck. Oh! So! <laughs> Come down. So Big moment guys. It's looking positive. Looking good over here. Just... Yeah. Yeah, good. Hey, so so <laughs> The engine and this monstrosity of a gearbox is out the RS6. This thing is huge. Okay, now we've got to find out what exactly has gone wrong with this engine by stripping it apart. But I haven't been, I've been a little bit sneaky with you guys throughout this whole video. And some of you might have noticed, but some of you may have not noticed. Throughout this video, I've been switching between this black car vertical t-shirt and this grey t-shirt, sometimes in mid-conversation. Did any of you notice? If so, how many times? Now this is something small that a few of you guys have missed, but what about if it was something big that you missed, like a car's history when buying it? Luckily you don't have to rely on yourself for this because you can rely on Car Vertical. Just look at what Car Vertical has to say about my Audi RS6. After I popped the VIN in, I could see the car was never stolen, it's never had any mileage fraud, it's got no outstanding finance, but of course, it was involved in an accident. I could see full mileage graphs, I could see when the car was in an accident, and I can also see a full timeline of the car. If your car was auctioned off at a car crash auction website, it's likely to show you the photos of when it was auctioned off there, just like this one on screen right now. You don't want that. You don't want that. To check your car out, a friend's car, or a car you're potentially about to buy, click the link in the description. In fact, do it after this video. Click the link in the description and go check your car out. Find out whether it's got any hidden history that you might not know about. That's Car Vertical. 
No more tricks now. I'm staying in the same t-shirt. Turbos are good. There's no play in the shaft in the turbo. This is a monstrosity of a 4 litre V8 twin turbo engine. And there's so many bits on it, it's unreal. All we want to do is take the head off one side to find out what exactly has gone wrong. I think the damage is mainly done on this side. So I'm going to attack this side first. Get the cylinder head off, see if the pistons are okay. I just really want to find out why there's water in there. If it's fixable, great. If it's not, not great. We are on a mission to get the cylinder head off. And there's so many things to disconnect. Look in there. Get out, Miss Swamp. Oh my. You see? Yeah. And the thing is, there? the thing is, if it was the head gasket, normally the head gasket, maybe if like something's broken, it's normally just one side. But this is both sides. And the only thing that connects both sides up is that charge cooler that was here. We continued stripping the engine apart. This time to check the part that Audi said that needed the recall. Now it's known that this car hasn't had the recall, but there was a bolt missing, so which makes us think it could have had the recall because there's no other reason why you would leave a bolt out unless you've had all of this off. And the recall was to do with a oil gauze, which is down here, should be able to get it out. It hasn't had the recall. So this is the gauze here. It's a tiny microscopic gauze to let oil through and any rubbish not through, but Audi have made these too small when it was actually causing blockages if you haven't changed your oil, like if you didn't keep up with your service stuff and then it'll blow your turbos. But that, one looks pretty clear, there's no rubbish in it, but two, hasn't had the recall uh, because that would have been bigger if not. A lot of people just take these out. So it hasn't had the recall, the turbos are fine. Our quest continues. Our mission still remains unanswered, but maybe once we get this cylinder head off, we will probably get the answer we've all been waiting for. Why has this engine seized? There was an unreal amount of bolts, wires, and hoses we needed to disconnect, but eventually we got there. Oh, yeah, that, it looks like the ocean in there. Head gasket hasn't blown. That's positive. But then why is the water in the head? This one's definitely burnt. Yeah. Oh! Bad. Oh, I found it, I found the problem. Oh, okay, right. I found the problem. <laughs> Let me have a look underneath and look under the head. Oh, that cylinder don't look good. <laughs> that doesn't look good. Let's have a look at that. Oh, oh, something's peppered that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let me show you the problem. <laughs> Do you know how cylinder sleeves are meant to be nice and round like this? <laughs> what happened to that one? Oh, oh no. no. Engine very, very bad. There is the biggest hole in that sleeve there from pre-detonation. That, that has got way too hot in there. And all we have to thank for that is California fuel. Because we put 90, well actually not California, yes California fuel, but also for me being an idiot, there's no way that's turning down. Oh my, oh! Oh my. Oh my God. That's it. Is that it? Is that it stuck? Let's have a look. So these holes here are like water jackets. That's shooting the coolant through, which is keeping the cylinder cool so it doesn't get too hot. But this has got way too hot and it's actually burnt a hole through to this to the actual water jacket which is probably explains why the water has come every, even the, would you reckon it's just blow back blow it's just blown back through i don't know why it's i don't know how the it, it would have gone through the inlet valve wouldn't it and then gone in all the other cylinders yeah and everywhere. yeah so that's the source of the water we found the source of the river nile <laughs> aka <laughs> the river of the rs6 the moral of the story is if you tune your car, put in good fuel. Yes. Otherwise that happens. <laughs> yeah, engine very bad. This is gonna be so expensive. Oh. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button. I guess we'll see you in the next video. Peace out. <laughs>
like a drug man I just can't deny giving me the best time